Welcome to Rauta, I am Jerry and this is the Norwegian Crash Course to 1990s Norwegian Black Metal. Now, since there are plenty of episodes behind us already, focusing more on the bigger bands and all that stuff, now we are delving more deeper into the cult acts, some of them which are often more or less forgotten. Now, in this particular episode, we will focus more on the acts that are more known for the avant garde takes, progressive takes and what have you. And let's be honest about it, a lot of these bands are forgotten from the black metal legacy, most of them because most of their material is not exactly black metal to begin with. However, all these bands from the 90s or beyond even, they already have their own takes on the world of black metal, even if not too deeply, even if not too with too many recordings and all that stuff. But in this episode, we will talk about Minas or Minas Tirith, Pecatum and Flaherty. And of course, we'll go from the oldest to the newest one. So first, we'll travel uh, to a place called Chesheim from Viken, Norway, and 1989 when this band was founded. Now, if you really think about it, there aren't too many bands uh, around black metal from Norway that were existing in 1980s. People usually probably gonna say, yeah, it's like Dark Throne and Mayhem and the rest, not so much. Well, maybe Thorns and all, but most of the bands more or less started around 1990 or 1991 and it Still, those names would be the very, very early bands. But Minas was, or Minas Tirith, I don't really know which way to use it. Probably we should talk about Minas Tirith, even though there are plenty of other bands with the same name, since that was the original name for the band back in the days. And um, much like the other bands' early days, well, it took quite a few years for them to actually make their first album. I mean, considering that they started in 1989, it was quite late, six years later, when they did The Art of Becoming in 1995. Still, quite early in the game, a lot of bands had already done albums in 1991, 1992, 1993, etc. So a little bit uh, late to the party in the sense of first wave of Norwegian black metal, which of course in general is known as the second wave. Now there are lots of people who will say that Norwegian black metal started to go in decline, in certain points of late 90s. Some would say as early as 1995, but I guess most people would probably talk about 1997 or 1998. Anyway, that's exactly when Minas Tirith was entering the game, 1995, with their album The Art of Becoming, having second album out three years later, and of, of the, after that it was already 2000s. And the band then started like going away after their third album, Dissertatio Profetae. Anyway, the early years of Minas Tirith are more or less a take into the world of black metal. Not exactly their typical ones, I mean, whether we're talking about the raw end of Norwegian black metal like Dark Throne, or the more sinister kind of uh, darker things like Mayhem, or the more symphonic takes like Emperor, or atmospheric parts like Persium. A lot of these um, Early birds went in a certain direction in order to kind of uh, set the cornerstones for Norwegian black metal. Then a little bit later on, there started being these bands which were more avant garde like uh, Vedbu and Zende, Arcturus and the like. And that's where Minas enters to play. Now, their early um, releases, or well, let's talk about early album maybe. These early works are not exactly your typical Norwegian black metal. I mean, they definitely have some... Um, elements, uh, parts, ideas, etc. that are definitely were, you know, this kind of Norwegian and Kurdish black metal started to shape and form and all that stuff. If you really can say that Avant Kurdish is never like going outside the borders of the box and all. But they were never exactly the band that we would, people would be talking about when they were talking about Avant Kurdish black metal in the first place. Maybe it's something to do with the lineup or maybe Minas Tirith that just never got the success for more traditional reasons, like sometimes promotion, sometimes doing gigs and all that stuff. They were more or less overshadowed um, by these bigger bands, the more active ones, more ones that were focused in Oslo, Bergen, what have you. Anyway, Minas Tirith did their own stuff, and it's something that you really don't probably confuse very easily to the other bands in question. I'm saying this because their music was almost like 
on the outskirts of Norwegian black metal, even when we're talking about the avant garde stakes. I mean, surely you have a lot of these features that you could say, yeah, it fits to the bill of avant garde black metal. But if you were never, you know, starting to think that this was exactly black metal related, but kind of uh, approached this from a different angle, you probably would have just forgotten the wor word black in the terms of genre definition, because on the other hand, a lot of Norwegian black metals, and of course from other countries as well, were sometimes more on the like melodic death metal side of things and all that stuff. Now, this is sometimes uh, very, very much like a line drawn in water. And I would say Minas Tirith could really be just considered extreme um, avant-garde metal or avant-garde extreme metal, whatever. But nonetheless, they are put into the box, so I don't really want to challenge that too much because it would be kind of a revisionist take to say, yeah, they're not black metal because they really sound like black metal in 2024 standards, if you know what I mean. Anyway, like here it said on um, Metal Archive site, they say early it was avant-garde black metal and then just progressive metal. I mean, sometimes it's hard to say where avant-garde takes stop ceases to be that and when it starts to be more progressive stuff. Some people would say, yeah, let's just call it experimental. I mean, you can just use all these different words in various ways and say they kind of mean the same thing, but sometimes it's easier to uh, use the word avant-garde when it's more kind of artistic and progressive when it's more like, I don't know, focused or more handled in a more strict ways, yet giving the room for experimentations of outside your typical genres. Now, be it as may, uh, I would say the early works are more on the side of black metal things and then it started slowly changing. What is curious is that if you take a look at this lineup, for example, there are still very early birds in the band. I mean, technically speaking, even though Tony Kirkemo, uh, or Kirkemo probably pronounced, wasn't there like in the 1989, it was still early on, like 1994, which is, in fact, for the first album. So, technically speaking, this band still has old members, even though the vocalist uh, is the new guy of the band, so to speak. And um, it's curious that they have kept it going together, even though they were on a hiatus for a few years. But in terms of black metal, because that's what this series is all about, if you want to delve into the world of Minas Tirith, I would say go for the early ones, because if you start in a uh, chronol <laughs> kind of anti-chronological order, if you start going from new to the old, you might feel a little bit confused, like why is this band even mentioned in the codex or database for black metal, because the later albums are just something different. It's almost like you could talk about Burzum, whether you're going to talk about the Dungeon Synth albums or the early black metal albums. It's almost like two different bands. And the same goes for Minas Tirith, even though they maintained in the world of metal. Still, very, very different bands. And of course, you could say the same about, you know, early Dark Throne, death metal one or the black metal one or whatever they did after that. But it's interesting, um, a side note, at least, in the world of Norwegian black metal to mention it, because at least for me, this band man managed to escape back when I was founding all these bands in the 90s, or at least early 2000s. And for some reason, Minas Tirith never made it to the discussions with my friends, and we were, you know, trading music back in the days. And, uh, I don't know, just escaped it, and uh, people never seemed to talk about too much. I actually found this by um, accident, almost, when I was figuring out what bands to include in the series. And I'm glad that I found them, but... I gotta say, this is not exactly my kind of black metal I, I'm too much keen or interested in, but it's at least now I know a little bit more, so maybe this is something you want to take a look if avant garde black metal is your thing in the first place. Then we will move on to the uh, second band and probably the most known band of this trio, Flaherty. This is interesting because they also started in as early as 1991. And what is also interesting that they still have the original duo in the band, so they have always kept it going the same way. What is still curious, however, is that during their more than 30 years of existence, they only made three albums. So there's like 17 years gap with the White Death third album, still the latest one, and the Department of Apocalyptic Affairs album from 2000s. So never exactly being the most active bands, and this is where it explains also 
Here it says black metal and later progressive slash avant card black metal. Notice now what I just said with the Minas Tirithan. Progressive and avant card is used here as like, um, <laughs> like a, not necessarily equal, but you're like progressive avant card. It's hard to define the line between the style when you, you kind of have one foot in the other side of things and one foot on the other ground. Anyway, their early album Mintid Skal from 1995 is definitely a black metal album and it's actually, in my opinion, a pretty good one. It's not for me a 90% out of 100% maximum score of an album, but I mean it kind of shows the 1990s feeling coming from Norway. Yes, overshadowed by bigger and more successful and in my opinion just more powerful black metal bands, but it already showcased that Flaherty was definitely quite interesting, a quite potential name to reach the heights and join the, you know, fray with other Norwegian black metal bands. Maybe a little bit later than those early birds, but I mean roughly still from the same era as, say, Dimmu Borker. However, they were man meant to be changed. Meant and meant, but you know what I mean. That is, when the second album came out, the style was totally different. And in terms of black metal, like the series is, you could pretty much forget whatever they did after Mintid Skal Komme. Whenever they went with these EPs or these two um, main albums, uh, after the debut one, they went in totally different direction. Maybe not as much changed as Minas Tirith, but let's be honest about it, their avant-garde metal is just totally something different. So, once again, the same thing as with Minas Tirith. If you're into finding more black metal bands, forget everything they did after Mintid Skalkomme and just focus on that or the demos, EP, whatever, before that. Because two different entities. I find these actually two later albums quite annoying, quite not something that I like. And it seems I'm like not, not the only one. If you like, take a look at these metal uh, archive scores. The first album gets 90% really great reviews. Then 52, which is quite bad, and 36. Well, okay, it's just one person opinion, but you can also check out the scores from Radio Music uh, in case you want to have more, uh, well, bigger pool of opinions voiced about the album. Just saying this. It shows a lot how people feel when bands change too much according to their own opinion. So maybe the people who would like the you know, later albums might be disappointed whatever this band did in the early days. But since Flaherty will always more or less be labeled as what they started with, this is what you get. Anyway, I would still say Mintit Skalkomme is an album I can strongly recommend you to check out even if it's not exactly a five-star album. And this is a good cue for us to hold on and get to the uh, third and the final band of this episode, Peccatum. Now, it's not exactly labeled here as black metal at all, but I decided to uh, include it and I will explain why. Now, here on Metal Arc it says that Avant Card Extreme Metal early and later on Avant Card Rock. And I can pretty much agree on that, but I will say this side project of things uh, was considered with the debut album Strangling from Within from 1999. Back in the days it was considered more or less a black metal release. So whether this avant card extreme metal thing is uh, something late to the party, uh, kind of a revisionist take or just a matter of taste, I don't really care, I don't really know. But I'm saying from the black metal perspective this band is worth including for a couple of reasons. First of all, Strangling From Within is well, kind of a black metal related album. I mean, it has those kind of a vocals, which are definitely in the world of black metal and sound wise and songwriting wise, it's definitely right there. But I wouldn't mind if some people want to just put it in the world of avant-garde extreme metal rather than an avant-garde black metal, because some, like I said, sometimes these lines are written in water. Now, back in the days, this album made waves for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was the Ihsan from Emperor Side Project. But beyond that, this was also done with Ihriel, Isan's wife, handling the rather experimental opera-like vocals, well, almost, and then also this other vocalist, which then again is brother of Ihriel. So one could say this is one of those family black metal bands. You have a man and the wife and the wife's brother. So in essence, like, it's like, let's just keep it within the family. And uh, that's the, what Peckham was. Um, I remember how some people, including partially me anyway, who were like kind of annoyed when this album made the 
point like art for the sake of art. And that was like some people like, what the fuck? We're doing black metal. We're not even considering this art. I mean, whether we're having to discuss an art versus entertainment doesn't really matter. But people like, what is this art of art to take when we're talking about black metal? But maybe that was partially because, well, people were more about like black metal is something than just music, not to mention art. Anyway, that album um, back in the days didn't exactly, you know, wasn't exactly celebrated that much, but at least it had the kind of a experimental and avant garde taken black metal, so you could really uh, include it there. But with the horrible drum machine, I mean, how come they didn't use a real drummer? Because it must be so that Isan had a lot of drummer friends, whether it's about Ember guys or guys from other bands like, I don't know, Enslaved, Mayhem, whatever. I mean, by 1999, they were so networked, they could have used a real drummer. But if the question was about, let's keep it in the family, and there was no uh, family drummer, maybe that's the reason, I don't know. But now in, like, 25 years later, that album sounds like, kind of awful. I mean, the production sounds kind of uh, lame, weak, uh, unpowerful, uh, very much like a demo recording with a horrible drum machine. But I would say even more horrible it went with Amur Fadi and Lost in Reverie. Now here you can see once again a big bump from 87% to 53. Uh, then again this last album is celebrated with 85, so what do I know? I would say Amur Fadi and Lost in Reverie, which are not exactly metal and even less so black metal, are not something that you want to go deep into um, unless you want to go beyond the borders of black metal. In terms of this video series, I would say the first album is barely within the limits uh, of finding its way to Norwegian black metal legacy. So whether we're talking about the extreme metal or black metal with avant-gardist shapes and takes, well, you can pretty much go strangling from within, but expect quite a different take than most Norwegian black metal coming out there. I mean, you kind of have to be ready to go beyond the borders of Arturus and Wedbu and Zende or Minas or Flaherty in terms of like getting ready to the battle with Strangling from Within. I don't like that album, and even less so, I find these other albums, which just went to the world of avant-garde rock. Maybe I get just allergic reaction out of avant-garde, I don't know, but never been my cup of tea. Somehow, it also seems like that the Strangling from Within, in particular, as opposed to the two other albums later on, felt like Easton's playground or laboratory, uh, in terms of like creating the later uh, Emperor albums as well as Isan's own solo career band. So one could even say, were these the demo projects, demo recordings or demo versions in a way, what could really happen with Isan? Was this just a family playground rather than a real band? Well, I don't get to answer that, but it's just something that comes into my mind when I was listening to these albums nowadays, knowing that Isan already has quite a few albums out, and of course Ember Career was done so many years ago. Anyway, from the point of black metal, Strangling from Within is barely there, but in case you want to know what else Isan did beyond Emperor and Isan, well, maybe in that sense you want to check it out. Of all these three different bands, these are hard to recommend to people out there, unless you really want to go deep into the world of avant-garde stakes, because neither of these, none of these bands are exactly black metal in the very core, even with the first album. Speculum, barely. Uh, Minas Tirith, barely. Flaherty, definitely up there. But after the first albums, they all went in different directions. So these are very, very hard cookie to crack. And in case you're coming from the more traditional take of black metal, of the second wave, that is, these gonna be hard ones. Some of, some of you out there might be like, really, this is the best shit out there ever made in Norway and coming from the black metal territory, but some people will also think quite differently. None of these bands are too interesting to me, but like I said, it's always fun to go through these pages uh, which you probably missed back in the days. Like for example, I got to hear Peckerum debut album around 1999 or 2000, whatever. Uh, I didn't like it, didn't check out the later ones either. Flaherty, I just remember hearing the first album back in the days and then it went away. And Minas, like I said, was never there on the map um, in the talks and whatever in terms of Norwegian black metal. So 
If you're much like me, you might have missed all these bands back in the days, but maybe you have heard them, maybe you already know them, and maybe I'm just full of shit and all. Anyway, in case you want to know more about the Cardish Takes and Norwegian Black Metal, these are the bands you can totally go into along with Arcturus, Red Ones, and then what have you. But if Avant Card means shit to you, like it seems to me, I mean to a lot of people out there, then just skip all the bands altogether and you will be a happier person. Anyway, this is Rauta and uh, this is the Norwegian Black Metal Crash Course. Let's see what we have in stock for the next episode. It will be more into traditional world of Norwegian black metal. So stay tuned for the next episode and uh, looking forward to your comments and experiences with this particular set of bands. So let me know what you think about these and uh, catch you again with the next episode. Bye bye.